What if I told you I know how to break your application? How do you do it, Corbin? I'm just going to go to your application. I'm going to hit right click. I'm going to hit inspect. And then I'm simply going to come up here to this little browser thing and hit mobile. And half of y'all applications are going to break. So let me show you how to do mobile native UI in your application. Welcome back. On today's video, we're going to be checking out how to create a responsive application specifically for web apps. If you're interested in like Corbin, I'm building an iOS app or I'm building an Android app. What I suggest you to do as a TLDR is just like, what does Corbin think about that? Use Flutter. That's going to be your tech stack. Corbin, what about React Native? You can if you want to. I think Flutter just gives you more intuitiveness when it comes to creating UIs that actually look good. I don't know about you but when I use an application, I want to use an application that looks good. Plus, Flutter is super cool because of the fact that the way Flutter works, it allows you to not only deploy on iOS in one tech stack, one code base, but also deploy on Android in one code base. If you are iOS native, proceed. If you are Android native, proceed. But the idea is that if you're not even making money, you might as well distribute your application across both platforms. And then once you start making money, then you would just hire a developer team or build out the product itself and then build out the iOS native version if you need to do that. This video, though, is web applications. So let's jump in. I'm going to go over the framework I use but let me show you like what mobile application even means so for example i come up here i click this notice it's like a slide up menu you don't see this on desktop i guess you could but it's like a slide up menu so the user can slide up they can also see very specific things to mobile ui i'll do this click this hey on desktop, we have a better experience because in reality, we do have a better experience. I mean, this is like an editing software. You don't typically like edit your phone on Photoshop. Edit your phone on Photoshop. I mean, like edit a thumbnail. <laughs> edit. Does Photoshop even have an app? Let me know, y'all. Does Photoshop have an iOS app? You don't typically do that. You do it. It's like a desktop application. So slide up. What I want you to understand first off about mobile UI is that you don't have to feel inclined to give every single action that you have on desktop on mobile. So a great example of this is my software here is right now, you essentially have 80% of the platform, but one part of the platform that I might migrate, but I might not is this new feature called CTR campaign. So what you'll notice is that it says quite literally desktop only because right now the CTR campaign is pretty pretty intuitive and I would prefer the user to just use it on the desktop. In theory, I'll probably migrate this and I'll go over how to migrate. But what this feature allows you to do is put on anyone's YouTube channel, as you see here, Corbin, Nate Black, Mr. Beast, the data. And then with this, you can create campaigns and then the campaigns, you know, do different things like quite literally add a thumbnail variation, titles, everything of this nature. I left this for desktop for now. Let me go over mobile native UI. So what do I use right now? I am using Radix and Radix UI is good for React based applications. There is other frameworks you can use. So I would suggest you just talk to a chat model and be like, should I use this or should I use that? Depending on what specifically your application does, but Radix plus other frameworks built on top of Radix allows you to do that little slide up drawer that's really cool. Think of Radix like uh, a toolbox. So just like React, Radix is a toolbox. So you have all your different tools here. And what it does is that it allows us to reference like pre-made components and then just put them in our mobile native UI, right? So like a pre-made component for like the nav bar, pre-made component for the slide up bar. Like we don't have to customly create mobile native UI. In theory, you could just circumnavigate all of these different frameworks like Radix and then create your own mobile native UI. But what I want you to think of is like the same logic of like these icons, the videos with the YouTube icon or the CTR icon here, or like the check mark icon. I didn't go the extra 20,000 yards here and said, you know what? I'm going to design all these icons. I don't care. They're open source. I'm just going to use icons that are open source. They're free. Same idea here. You might as well use a framework that is native mobile UI that is free and open source. So two things you just learned here. The first thing you just learned is that on mobile UI, don't feel obligated to provide every single feature that you have on desktop UI. Just like, who cares? Still give functionality to your application, of course, but it's a web app. Like end of the day, if for some reason, you know, maybe your web app excels in mobile UI, then proceed, add all the features. But for me, there's like certain things I'm just like, I'm just not gonna give access to. You gotta use desktop. So you know you can actually gatekeep certain features in mobile. This is standard. The second thing you learned is that there is open source frameworks that allows you to get very pre-made components that you can leverage like the absolute beauty of this slide up drawer that is mobile native i like it i didn't have to code out some custom thing to have this slide drawer effect i use this throughout the application i want to do this template it comes up boom looks amazing and i can keep proceeding in this way so let's go down to architecture here and how you need to build it out so if you have you may already have some responsiveness but you might not have built it out correctly so we have our application here and especially with web apps here you're gonna have two different essentially folders as a tangent if you're building out an application that is mobile first like swift flutter anything i referenced earlier typically what happens in this workflow is that you would use your one code base just for the mobile deployment like i have the application on my iphone i click it 
code and then you would share the back end, but then you would build out separate code base just for a web app. What I would suggest you to do in that context is simply just create the correct code base for the mobile app here. And then after you create the correct code base for the mobile app or the web app on MVP, just make it a landing page and then make it so it's like, you know, like when you go to a landing page for an app, it's just like download on Apple, download on Android, do that. And then if your application actually becomes successful, then you could go the extra 20 yards of connecting the back end that you use for your mobile app and then connecting it to the front end of your web app. Keep in mind, big platforms like Robinhood, the stock exchange one, they didn't even start with a, like they had a web app, but it was just like the simple like landing page of like download the app. Now they have the infra and they built out and connected the back end to Robinhood front end. So you can do trades on the web app as well. Long way to wave me saying that if you are working on a mobile app development, typically this doesn't apply to you because of the fact that your code base has already been singular for mobile hardware. But if you have a web app, you need to approach this way and you'll still need to approach the same way to an extent if you do a web app connected to a, mo a mobile app. You can have two folders, two different structurings. This is going to be D for desktop and for mobile and the way you approach your conversations with the vibe coding is essentially, well, first off, Make your desktop look amazing. Make your desktop UI killer. Like it's perfect. Once you made your desktop UI perfect and you had a good experience, that is when you tackle mobile and you need to use terms like, hey, I like my desktop UI, but can we create architecture for a whole separate folder that is dedicated to mobile native UI? You are then going to use the ask plan execute method. What is this method, Corbin? You should have subscribed. Subscribe and check it out. Ask plan method. You're going to create a plan that's going to create mobile native UI. During this planning process, it's going to give you suggestions of different types of frameworks you can use for your mobile native UI. Therefore, what application are you building? If you joined me along this journey to building Thumbio.com from complete scratch, then you know we're using a TypeScript-based application. And then based off my consensus of all the different types of mobile native UI I could have done on my web app, I chose Radix. I chose Radix due to the fact that I don't want to create a framework from scratch. And from the UI that I saw of Radix, it looked the most appealing for a image editing software. But you need to take away this. If right now the way you are mobile responsive is that it is simply looking at the viewport and it's seeing that at 768 pixels, we're going to use your mobile UI that is still based off the desktop UI, you're messing up. Create a whole separate UI, whole separate components that is associated with just mobile. And then once you have components that are associated with just mobile, the connecting between the two data points is no biggie. So that just about does today's video. That's how you make a mobile responsive application. Simply find your open source framework, connect it to your web app and proceed. So make sure you leave a like and I'll see you in the next. Did Corbin just show me how to create a web app in the correct way so that it is mobile responsive type of video? I did it.